Hi, it's Sean, the Fluency Awesomeizer. This is Decoding Multisyllabic Words, episode 61. I've got four words I'm gonna take a close look at. Let's get started. All right, read these words right out loud when you see them. What's this first word? How about this? The third word. And finally. All right, were any of those tricky to read? If so, keep watching. I'm gonna show you some decoding strategies you can use when you're stuck on an unfamiliar word, plus a lot of other information. But first, a reminder of the fable of the tortoise and the hare. And the moral slow and steady wins the race, which is great advice when you get stuck on a big unfamiliar word like this one. You can think of those words as races, right? They're, they're long, you have to be in shape to finish them. And if you read like the hare, you might race through to get finished first. That's where mistakes can easily happen. But if you read like the tortoise, you take it slow and steady when you're trying to decode these words. That patience is definitely going to help improve your reading. Keep that in mind. Let's practice. All right. The first word here starts with purr. That's an R-controlled sound, purr. That gets confused with pre a lot. So compare those two. This middle syllable here, that is sep. That C is going to be a soft C because it's followed by an E. Sep, sept. Is that tie? No, this is perceptive. Tricky word, comes from the Latin root percept, especially this root sept. In Latin, that means to take, right? We've got the English word perceptive. You drop that PT, the English word is also related to perceive. That is a verb that means to take possession of, as if to gain knowledge, to perceive. So we've got the word perceptive. There's the root percept. The other root is I-V-E at the end. Now that goes back to Latin too. You can see perceptivus. The ivis, that's a Latin root. Over time, it became the French if, perceptif. And now we have an English perceptive, I-V-E. The trick to that is it, it looks like it should say perceptive as in the word I've, but it's a, it's a short I. That's, that silent E rule doesn't affect the I in I-V-E. Right? It just sounds like perceptive, but the silent E is there. In fact, any word that ends with V in our language always has a an E at the end. There's no word that ends with just a B. Perceptive. Next word also starts with per, or controlled sound, not to be confused with pre. Purse, there's spec, spect, and there's the tiv. Oh, perspective again. Yeah, okay. It's got tiv again. But that is the root of that is spect, Latin root spect. That means sight or looking in Latin. Mm -hmm. Looking. You see it in words like inspect, which means look at closely, and respect, which literally means to look up to someone, respect. So we've got spect and the root per, that goes back to Latin too, it means through, among other things. So per spect in Latin means, has to do with how you see things, right? How you see things, there he goes. So we've got the Latin root perspectivus, the, the ivis became perspectif, in French, and now we've got the IVE perspective. And again, just a reminder, silent E rule doesn't apply here. It's perspective, that's a short I at the end, but the E is there. Perspective. All right, the next word. It's got an I in the middle. Did you notice that? Not only an I, but it's got a tricky vowel pair, IA. Uh, what do we do with that? Let, tell you what, let's focus on what we know. I'm going to show you, you can start at the end of a word sometimes when you're stuck on it, because I can easily see able at the end of this word. That's the open syllable, nigh. That looks like den, nigh, able. And there, we know it starts with un. Yeah, this is the word undeniable. Root word of that is the verb deny, as in nope, mm -mm, sorry. Got to deny that. And deny, put the suffix able on the end, turn it into an adjective. But some about deniable, some about the spelling doesn't look right. So the, the Y, we're going to drop that Y and add an I then put able on the end to get a word that means literally able to deny, deniable. Then we put the prefix un in front and look how busy this word is. Undeniable, five syllable word. And the last word here starts with un, it's got 10 in the middle, there's able. Yeah, this is untenable. Untenable is an adjective, the root is tenable. And tenable, you might, it might be an unfamiliar word has to do, it means capable of being held or maintained. And to make sense of that, think of it holding a baby. Sure, I'll hold the baby. Everyone loves holding the baby, tenable. Untenable, however, that's the opposite. 
as if uh, to hold a um, a tarantula. <laughs> untenable, untenable, untenable. All right, that's it for today. Oops, subscribe to my oops, subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook for more helpful decoding videos like this at my Facebook page and my photos. There's an album full of reading challenges I've written to help you practice decoding those big words and to practice optimizing your fluency. If you haven't liked, followed, or subscribed, screenshot this and find me at the Fluency Awesomeizer. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Talk to you soon.